How we how we gonna clean this up, Elroy? Look look at your people. You care about that? You do? How we gonna clean this up? One day at a time? Do you feel like this your responsibility? It is your responsibility. What's your nationality? What's my nationality? Human? Is that what God said? Where did God say in the Bible that our nationality is human? He did. So now watch this. I asked you what your nationality was, right? Because a lot of people, that's not a nationality. That's not a nationality. So human, I, I'll break it down to you. The word human means color. A man is what you are, right? A man of color, yes, you're a man of color. How you doing, sister? Come closer. What's your name? Teach. You're Maggie? Elroy said he's a human. Are you a human? Yeah, you're a human, right? What kind of human are you? African-American human, that's what she said, right? What kind of human are you? Hold on, what kind of human are you? Okay, what was the disciple? Ah, I like that. I got a question, that's, 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 like, the, that's like the main thing. Come close, I, I like you, bro, you be talking. Which what tribe are you from? Zebulon. Zebulon, look, you see how he gave me his nationality off top? He knew. You know why you couldn't do it? Because you didn't know. Give me Isaiah chapter one and three. Bring it up. You said, you said that you was African-American, right? You ask me what, what tribe did the disciples come from, right? I'm going to show you. Watch this. Isaiah 1, verse 3. Bring it out. The ox knows his owner. The ox knows his owner. This is the reason why you don't know who you are. Because even the ox know who owns him. He know who his God is. He know who takes care of him. Read. And the ox, his master's crown. And even the dumb ass know where he lived at. He know where he come from. Where you from? What, 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 what land you come from? The Congo, South Africa. Guess who in the Congo? The Israelites. Right. Watch this. But Israel. But who? Israel. But who? Israel. You see why she didn't say Israel? She said the Congo. She's a Congolese. Watch this. I'm not done. Watch this. But Israel. But who? Israel does not know. You don't know who you is. Yeah. We were the Israelites. That's what you, I, I guarantee you. We are the Israelites. Nah, we were the Israelites. Watch this. Give me that. Give me that in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Come back. You see how, you, hey, look, you make a statement of wrong because you cannot back it up with knowledge. You are, hey, give me that in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My sister, you say you're Congolese, right? Congolese. Your daughter, she's Congolese, her father is from, from the Congo. When did you come here? 20, 22 years ago? So her father's from the Congolese or he's from here? He's from Africa? Okay. So you, you, you're, you're, give me Isaiah. Chapter 11 and verse 11. Bring it out. This is what I want to show you, right? The so-called people that you see around you, you yourself, you are an Israelite according to the Bible. Our people were scattered throughout the Americas, scattered throughout Africa, scattered throughout Europe. Why? Because we broke God's commandments. We are the Israelites. We are God's chosen people. And the, and the condition that we're in shows us who we are. It shows us who we are, the Israelites, because we're under the punishment of God right now as we speak. Watch this. Isaiah 11, verse 11. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass in, the, in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. The remnant of who? His people. So God is coming to, to gather the remnant of his people. The people that have been forgotten about. The people that ain't, don't nobody care about. God is coming back to deliver them. You understand? Where are they going to be at? So we're coming to the remnant of his people. Uh -huh. We shall be left from Assyria. From where? Assyria. Assyria is in Turkey. Read. And Egypt. And Egypt. That's the top of Africa. Read. And from Bethlehem. That's the that's lower Egypt, read. And from Cush. And from where? Cush. That's uh, Ethiopia, read. And from Elam. And from Elam, right? That's, that's India, read. And from Shinar. And from Shinar. You gotta, what you got to realize is God is gathering his people from all over the earth. And that's what I'm reading to you 
right now, right? So what you got to do is you got to wake up and know who you are. You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Our people are scattered everywhere. You got to teach that to your daughter, right? Being Congolese, that's the name of the country. But who are the people of Israel? Who are the people? Give me that in uh, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 1. Bring it on. Show you something, right? Who are the people that live in the Congo, that live in Ethiopia, that live in, uh, 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 give me another one, that live in the Paphros, Nigeria. Give me that, give that live in Ghana. These are the people of God. Watch this. Isaiah 44, verse 1. Uh -huh. Get now here. I'm Jacob, my son. Uh -huh. And Israel. And who? Israel. And who? Israel. Uh -huh. Who I have chosen. Who did God choose? Bring it out. Watch this. I want you to be specific. I'm going to read it to you again. Watch this. Yet now here, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, and who? Israel, who? Israel, whom I have chosen. Who did God choose? He told Israel. Who did Jesus Christ come for? You don't know? Matthew 15, 24. I want to give you the basis of what the Bible is talking about. If I can give you that, that uh, that'll uh, help you to understand who you are. Watch this. Matthew 15 verse 24. Bring it out. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Unto the house of Israel. Who was Christ? Jesus Christ said he was sent to Israel. Why? Why did he call them lost sheep? Because you think you're Congolese. Bring it out. Huh? Huh? You see that? So what should you be calling yourself? Watch this, step back. Right here we have this sign, right? Right now it's tailored specifically to the people in the Americas. But guess what? The people in Africa are also the Israelites. We're not talking about all of them because there are nomadic tribes in, in, in Africa. We're talking about the Israelites in Africa. of our people, you contributing to it. You understand? Because we, you not keeping the laws is the reason why we all out here. You understand? So that got to be your responsibility. You got to keep it, teach it to your daughter so she don't end up like these people out here. You understand? Watch this. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Hold on. Give me, uh, uh, hold that and give me Leviticus chapter 19 and 29. Right, prostitute, not, yeah. yeah. You know what I want? Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 29. Do you, do you know what's going on with our young women today? Teach. Prostitution. Not just prostitution on the street, 
but they're prostituting themselves on the internet. Right. They shaking their buns on the internet, right. showing their body on the internet. Right. You got a beautiful young girl right here with you. Do you understand? Who's going to be her example? That's right. You are. You are. But you got to be, you got to transform yourself into that example. Right now, you're probably not that best example, are you? Watch this. Leviticus 19.29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. That's a commandment. The Bible says we cannot prostitute our daughters to cause her to be a whore. Guess what it starts with? It starts with how she dresses, how she carries herself. But you got to be that light to show her that. Because if you're not doing it and you're trying to impose it upon her, she's going to look at you like a hypocrite. She might resent you, but you got to teach her that. Right? Watch this. Now jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The Bible says that a woman is, supposed, is not supposed to wear what a man has to wear. You understand? Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. I cannot wear what a woman is supposed to wear. Right? My brother, come closer. Come closer, my brother. Come closer. Watch this. You got a young daughter, too. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful thing. Why? Because what I'm teaching her, you can apply as well. That's right. Now watch this. this. Look at what we're reading. The first scripture we read was, in the Bible it says, Thou shalt not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Yeah. We don't know that we're doing this unconsciously when we, when we, uh, when we expose our, our, our children to the world in worldly fashion. You understand? Why? Let's read it again. Read Leviticus again. Leviticus 19, verse 29. Uh -huh. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. The Bible says we can't prostitute our daughter to cause her to be a whore. Right. Meaning, if we don't guide them the right way, we're causing her to be a whore. Right. right. This is one of the ways, right? How your daughter present herself, is that is that important? It is. How should how did God say she's supposed to present herself? Huh? Covered. You're right. You're absolutely right. Watch this. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So a woman, this is, listen to what God says. Watch this. A woman is not supposed to wear what belongs to a man. Right? Watch this. Let's read the next verse. Let's finish it out. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And it says, neither shall a man put on what belongs to a woman. Let me ask you this. If I wear a dress, my brother, am I applying that scripture? I'm not. So what... What am, if I can't wear a dress, what am I supposed to be wearing? Pants. So now it says that a woman ain't supposed to wear what, a, what belongs to a man. What you got to put on your daughter from now on? A dress. That's right. You say, remember, from your words, you said your daughter, it's important how your daughter presents herself. So you got to put a modest dress on these young sisters. And you got to be that example to your daughter. You understand? You got to do that. Because guess what? In pants, when the when the young when the young women put on pants today, what's the first thing they look at? You know, you see what I'm saying? They looking at their shape and how the pants fit. They not supposed to be thinking like that. Right. Why? Because they not supposed to be wearing the pants in the first place. Yes. Right. You understand that? That's prostituting your daughter to become a whore. Right. I don't care if you try to put baggy pants on her. Now she looking like a man. Right. You gotta put that dress on her and that loose fitting dress so it won't be showing her figure. That's how you dress your daughter. That's right. That's how, that's how we're preparing the next generation to not be out here with this filth. TikTok. Look at that, you don't want your daughter on TikTok, right. YouTube, right. Facebook, right. OnlyFans. You see that? She don't know nothing about that. But guess what? If you don't, you do. And if you don't guide her the right way, she's going to learn it. She's going to learn it. Right. It's inevitable. They pushing it hard. So guess what? I got a scripture for you. Give me Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Yeah. Bring it on. Matthew 5 and 16. What can you change today? Well, I'm talking about with you. Which you can change. What can you change? I'm talking about about yourself. What did we just read? 
Let her know. Bring it up. By dressing like a child, right? Not just, not just dressing your child, right? Because look, you can put the dress on her. You can put the dress on her, right? But she going to look at you like, Mama, you still wearing pants. Yeah. Bring it what is that going to do to her I spirit? Make it plain. Ah, there you go. You got to wear, you got to start dressing modestly. Right. Right. Watch right. this, read it. Matthew chapter 5 and 16. Bring it up. Is that, that's my Baptist brother. Come on, my Baptist brother. Bring it up. Come on. Come on up. Watch this. We're reading the Bible. You believe in the Bible, right? Yeah. Now watch, watch what we read. Read. Let your light so shine before men. God says you got to let your light shine before men, right? The things that God told you to do, you got to let everybody see it. Right. So you got to put on that modest dress. Right. And then when you put on that modest dress, your daughter going to be like, Mommy, that look beautiful. Right. I want to put on a dress. You understand? I want to dress modest. I want to cover my body up, right? But if you're not doing it, she's not going to want to do it. Read. That they may see your good works. That she may see your good works. Read. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that's the only way she's going to glorify God if she see you doing what God say and she begins to do it. You understand that? What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.